welcome to the Wrestling Fan Wrestling Show. And a more dignified start this week with one half of the All Box Morrow and the Kenny Omega of the Quadruple Bypass, Johnny Marts. I don't know why this is a thing. <laughs> it's, a, it's a thing now. My stomach is actually grand. I'm I know, okay. I'm, I know. Well, I hope it is. Yeah, twice our matches are on tap, you know. Yeah, so we have no Shaz Beef this week, the Beefy Boy, Shane O'Keefe. No. No. How do you think my start was? It was really good. Probably better in some ways. I thought in some ways it was better. I wanted to bring a more dignified. I think there's a lot of dignity to it. A more, uh, you had the air of a kind of a Michael Parkinson. Lovely, Michael um, Parkinson. Maybe a, a Johnny Carson, even a, a, John, a regular old Johnny and Carson. Those guys, you know, they they didn't flex. They never flex. No, they didn't need to. They didn't need to flex. They have this uh, kind of a quite dignified, um, quite dignified and powerful demeanor. Yeah, I think Shane sometimes has to overcompensate. Yeah, perhaps, you know. perhaps. But uh, big week in wrestling, John. <laughs> yeah, big week in wrestling. I don't have the segues that, that Shane no, this, has. Is, yeah, this one starts to fall apart now. <laughs> Speaking of Johnny yeah, the Carson. The two of them just have to talk to each other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Speaking uh, of Johnny Carson. Shane was the glue that held it together. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, R.I.P. Sid. Yeah, very sad. Very sad news. Sad news. Wasn't expecting it. Like Younger than I thought, too. Sid was 63 uh, and still active on the uh, on the circuit up yeah. a couple of weeks ago. Um, but apparently, yeah, he was battling, battling cancer. cancer for a long time. Uh, what is your defining memory of Sid? It's, I mean, the first thing I always think of is the Survivor Series 96 entrance. Oh, unbelievable. Um, in fact, that matched the entire package where yeah. Sid murders an old man. Yeah. And Quality. Just destroys Shawn Michaels, who has been kind of his on and off friend mm. for about... Two years of this. He was kind of like the Diesel before Diesel arrived. He was like, yeah, he he was more controllable. Yeah. Uh, for Shawn Michaels. Yeah. But then also uh, completely not controllable. Uh, my <laughs> He's like, this lad is not going to threaten me as a star, but it's like, no, he will. Look at him. He will threaten your life. <laughs> yeah, and he yeah. did many times. So that, that match was just fucking amazing. Yeah. That's a great match. I, I, What's I, yours? I, so... My defining memory of Sid you know, is... Sid jumping off the middle rope and breaking <laughs> no, his leg. No, no, no. I have watched that one too many it's times. horrible. Poor Sid. Yeah, that was the, um, it was the beginning of the end. 92 Sid. Royal Rumble finish. Yeah, excellent. Where, uh, you know, the mega white meat baby face Hulk Hogan cheats. Did they have a name like their duo? I don't like know, did justice or something Hulk's like that. justice. <laughs> the Sid, justice of Sid, the mega powers. Sid Hogan. Sid Hogan. He could have, could have been a Sid Hogan. Uh, you know, and then, he, like, <laughs> poor old Sid gets cheated out of the Royal Rumble by that was Flair the, and That Hogan. was the first time that I'm aware of where they, uh, they piped in um, cheers to cover. Yeah. Or piped in booze to cover all the cheers. Because apparently in the building, uh, Sid was treated like a massive baby face and Hogan. I, like, was, uh, I was eight years old at the time and I was sick to my shit of Hulk Hogan. Yeah, I think a lot of people are sick to their shit of Hulk Hogan. <laughs> you know, uh, and he cheated then. He cheated mm. at the end of the match. Um couple of years down the line that'd be a heel turn a clean yeah heel 100% turn. heel turn yeah and like Sid could have been your next they, Hogan baby fest they like. could have just flipped it yeah yeah it would have been awesome what if you what if you have a guy like Hulk Hogan except he's he has these psychotic breaks yeah and he kind of like just talks to himself yeah that's Sid that's Sid there's also another thing that I love about Sid's kind of latter the the latter run of his prime years would say is remember his feud with Goldberg and WCW yes that's just Glorious, yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> in a lot of ways, for a lot, a lot, a lot of the wrong I mean, reasons. Yeah, like his his poor car, his car like, turned into a cube. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the greatest segments in the history of wrestling. Like, <laughs> that's so good. Oh, uh, look, any segment where Sid looks to the sky and shakes his fist yeah, is fucking yeah. gold in my book. Like going back over that Sid stuff over the last week or so, you realize, like he, you know, he had this reputation for not being that great an in ring worker, but. He made it work. He had a lot of tremendous matches There's for a guy that isn't matches. that good. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, and I don't think anyone looked more like a professional wrestler. He he is the mold. He's the mold. Like if you could create a professional wrestler, you're like creating in it. in every possible. As soon as he debuted, he was fast tracked. Yeah. Um. And I think you know you know there's a lot of critiques of uh, Sid's in ring work rate and it's mostly true but like you can't imagine the late 80s how fucking quickly uh you know jim crockett promotions <laughs> nwa were like speed this guy, along. This guy to the top yeah 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 like, he didn't get the chance to work uh 
20 minute openers no you know even mean? like you know Luger was bedding in for a while yeah, Zig yeah. was like get this fucking lad on telling Luger had a 2-3 like, year bed in before he had any kind of serious main event run Sid was just so compelling to watch and then yeah. if you look at his physique presence uh, his promos his deranged promos, promos yeah um, so compelling another thing I loved about him is that like summertime had come and his passion was softball and he was like fuck you guys I'm taking the summer off to go play in some softball league in wherever you're from you know what I mean? yeah, that was, yeah he had a very healthy work life balance yes. his attitude towards pro wrestling was a lot better than um, a lot of his contemporaries yeah and you know, I'd say Sid was Sid was probably fucking. You know, he was partying probably a bit. And I'd he, say so, yeah. Yeah, and he was the steroids were definitely in play. I'd say more than likely. But Sid knew when to take time off and yeah. not get stale. He he was never stale actually. Like he really had that kind of Bruiser Brody um, attitude. Yeah. Of don't stick around the territory too long. People get sick of you. Maintain your mystique. He was the last of a dying breed, really, because... He could take, and he could take losses without losing much of his aura as Yeah, well. yeah. I don't, like, ever remember him... I don't ever remember thinking, oh, uh, that... Not that buried, you know, he was buried too much, but, like, oh, uh, yeah, you know, kind of Sid needs to go away for a while. No. Because whenever he was there, he was only there for... Yeah, six, you, ne- seven, you, never, you never got sick of Sid. No. You and know. you could bring him in, you could slot him in, main event WrestleMania. Yeah, I just wish, you know, like, he definitely was, I think, in some ways... Um, like particularly in the kind of WLF wrestling mainstream, the first kind of prototype anti-hero character. Yeah, yeah. Um, he kind of paved the way for, I think Austin. I think Vince just didn't know what he had with him at the time. If you're, sure. if which you're, is weird for Vince. Yeah, it's, but he was trying to make him Hulk Hogan when, in actual fact, you're going. Actually, he's Doctor D, David Schultz, but mixed with Hulk Hogan. Yeah, yeah. That's your package here. You couldn't get the most out of his own personality. Yeah, like yeah. he's 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 a dangerous character. The guy's at his most convincing playing a psychopath. Yeah, and I suppose Vince he knew, didn't, he, he knew it better than anyone. Vince didn't know what to do with anti-heroes till Austin showed him what to do with an anti-hero. Exactly. Yeah, like yeah. he had to be guided down that garden path. Like, yeah, and I think Sid, and Sid really he struggled to stay as too much of a heel. People loved him. Sure, people he was, just loved him. Yeah, he was. Like, and there like was a good, there was always Survivor cons- Series entrance. Like. I mean, yeah, people were sick of Shawn Michaels, you yeah. know. And there was a couple of people that that was Vader's anointed spot. Yeah, things didn't work out for him. Uh, Ultimate Warrior had been positioned for that spot. Fell apart. Plugs it in. Yeah, he's gone. Sid's the one who replaces Ultimate Warrior. As always in that era, plugs it in, plugs it in, plugs yeah. it in. Um, same, yeah. with, same WCW did with him in the in their dining years as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, and like they brought him back a couple of times during that thing, you know, yeah. as well. But not even uh, someone the master of the world and the universe <laughs> could save WCW in the late nineties. No, not at all. He had a decent run there, though. In all fairness. Speaking of WCW in the late nineties, uh, AEW all in fifty thousand tickets. <laughs> fifty thousand tickets. Uh, look, in any other era, that is a roaring success. It's in this mad, era, it's, it's actually mad success. to me. It's mad to me that that is seen as any kind of like a, how what how I know. Look, we are not as hot, obviously. Yes, we all know that. But this narrative of uh, from the grifters, shall we say, of AW dying or whatever. They just sold about fifty five thousand fucking tickets in Wembley. In Wembley, yeah. That is a remarkable success. Yeah, they've, a, they've announced four stadium shows next year. Is it four? I think they're kind of adjusting their model. I think they're looking at like, and it's hard not to look at how tired a lot the of their audiences. American audiences yeah. are. Yeah. Some WWE figured out, you know, two three years ago. Yeah, look at what WWE did the in that Leon show in, um, in France. France. That was unreal. Yeah, I, I didn't know the French fans had that in them. Either did I. Yeah. But, so now well, we have 55,000 tickets there sold in Wembley, obviously down from the 80-odd thousand last year. Yeah. Uh, still huge success. Then they're going next February, Australia. Yeah. I looked at stadium up, it's like 50-something thousand stadium. Uh, and that's, for, that's Grand Slam full gear. Grand Slam. Grand Slam? In February. As a pay-per-view? Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, they're going back to London with Forbidden Door, and they have that one in Texas. They've moved all into Texas in July in a baseball stadium or 50-something yeah. thousand stadiums. Big, big so. Texas show. It's going to be interesting to see. They've always done well in Texas. They've always, done they've done always well got hot Texas. crowds in Texas. And I think this will be the same. Yeah. And see, they did that Arlington thing for Collision there recently, the residency, uh, and it wasn't a, a big venue at all, but the really f- unique set looked cool. Looked really cool. You're like, uh, but you they sold a thousand tickets every week. Yeah, which I was worried about. What to do? Six weeks? 
I think they did six weeks. I yeah, was worried yeah, yeah. that like towards the end of that there'd be serious fatigue. No, it was pretty good, and they were putting on tight shows. I mean, good shows, and they, they used a lot of Mexican talent that you know would yeah. have ties to the Texas region. Yeah. yeah. Um. Good so. Move. I think, you know, and we're about to get the TV deal announced any day now. <laughs> any, day. any day now. Uh, I don't know what day. Like, a Collision, definitely. I mean, it's always a pretty sh- solid show, but it just feels like it's flailing. And it does. It, I, think every, I think each of their shows needs a more defined identity. Yeah, like Just Make Rampage or Lucha Show. Just, exactly. You know, and then Collision, I don't know how you get that heated up again. Collision, I think it's just like there was a, there was a while there, you know, over the first year where you're like mostly felt like this is the trio show, and it's like if yeah. that if that is great, yeah. But the trios need to have big main event stories. Yeah, but see now the problem and with, they can still carry that because you look at the talent that goes through that division. Oh, it's like, insane. Yeah, but um, it doesn't help then when you're you know your trios belts just end up in afterthoughts and bigger cards. I know. And, you know like, okay, so tag team titles. You watch the all of the uh, all-in pre-show? I watch every little bit of it. I, <laughs> I've been so uh, conditioned by WWE pre-shows to offer absolutely nothing of value whatsoever mm. that I was like, oh yeah, I'll just like, I'll put this on in the background I'm just going to fucking read. Go about my business. Go about my business. Yeah. And I was hooked. Uh, to the pre-show I was hooked include, to the pre-show. I missed the uh, It was fantastic The 16 man tag 16 Apparently man Kip Sabian got a good um, Pop in Kip Wembley. Sabian got a great pop I was good looking friend. at that And I was like man sh- Like he really Poor guy He really should be in that You know Casino Gauntlet Why yeah, is he yeah. not in this Like you know yeah. He's in this guy And I, I realised why later on Which yeah. we'll get to But still great pop Good for Tommy Billington Yeah great This young in his career Like Out in Wembley Out in Wembley Top class uh, yeah, yeah, this is it. Like, his his uncle never got to do that, no. unfortunately. So what was the second match on the pre-show, John? That was the... Um, that was the clusterfuck 16-man... Was it even 16, 16-man tag? That was... Oh, no, what was the first match then? That was the first Yeah, match. and then we went on uh, to... We, just... just yeah. one, one brief thing. Uh, Leo Rush v Satnam Singh was absolutely worth any amount of time spent. I actually <laughs> did see that clip on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. anyway, that was, that was great crap. Yeah, yeah Leo real Rush fun, so great. Like. Real fun, real fast match. Um... Like an absolute mess, not in med sense story wise. Who cares? But I let a few English boys get run out in the car. Yeah. Tommy Billington, Kip Sabian, Anthony Ogogo. Like, big deal for him getting to oh, wrestle big, Massive, massive. And I think that was a, a thing, there was a, a kind of a sourness amongst the roster last year that there wasn't those type of spots on the first yeah. all in in Wembley, and a lot of people were left and off I, the card. I think that's why the pre show was so hot because everyone had their working boots yeah, on. Yeah, they were like, fuck <laughs> it. Everyone was like, yeah, this is my chance. I'm getting out in Wembley. Like, yeah. get to do a stadium show, fucking having the crack. Yeah. Um, and there was some um, brilliant sequences throughout that, like great matches. Yeah. Every, every match was fun. What was the second match on the pre-show? Is that that, uh, I, that was Stokely, Willow, Nightingale, yeah. and Ishi. Come <laughs> on, Stokely had way here. Ishi with a spinebuster. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the thing that happened. Yeah, as I said, I was bet into this. <laughs> like, like realistically, right? To build up their all-out match because it looks like they're going Statlander, um, Willow, St- Chicago Street Fight at all out. Yeah, CMLL uh, women's title on the line. Yes, the track, yeah. yeah, and it looks like that's the direction they're going. Um, so realistically, Statlander and Stokely should have won, but you can't have Stokely go over Ishi. <laughs> Stokely ain't going over here no, in no, Wembley. No. Yeah, against a, Ishi. You know what I mean? No. That's and like, it's a pre-show. That's like Michael so, Cole uh, going over Jerry Lawler at WrestleMania. <laughs> you, should, you, should not, you should not do and should that, not happen. That's high on the list of yeah. things that should not have happened. Uh, that was a fun match. Really fun yeah. match. Uh, I, I think those Statlander and Willow will tear the house down in at All Out. Brilliant workers. They've actually, in, in fairness to them, like they have very quietly maintained a good, solid feud yeah. for months now. A long time. And they're finding new things to do in it and it doesn't feel entirely worn out. I think definitely like... This should you know, be the blow off. Oh, this should be yeah. the blow off. Well, it's but, a street fight. But, but yeah, but they, they've really sustained it, you know. The thing about Statlander is everyone in the women's division, along with maybe Sheeta as well, but everyone in the women's division has their best match with Statlander. Statlander is solid. Um, like, she's not the hottest baby face in the world, but it also seems like it's really hard to book her as a heel as well. I know, yeah. It's a weird one. She's just an inherent likability about She's her. so likable. You know, it's hard. Remember when she showed up first as the alien? Yeah, that's the thing. Like, everyone knows, like, she is, she's a fucking beast, like. Yeah. But. She's very funny. She, she's very funny and started off with an alien gimmick. So yeah. everyone's just like, ah, Statlander, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, she's, yeah. she's part of the best friend stable. Yeah. 
a beloved stable. It's very, yeah, very hard. A beloved stable. It's very yeah. hard to dislike people. Trent was just about managing to make me dislike him. But yes. He was the, he was least, the most likable. He was the least likable of, yeah. of the best friend stable. And then we went from there to what was next on the pre-show. That, did I think we were into the Soraya night? We had the Soraya and the Carney family from the hell. Night, <laughs> the night family. Like, after Jesus shaking Christ. down a few boys for a fucking change back. How many of them was there? There's a load of them. Jesus Christ. But every time I see the night family on anything, they multiply. I felt like yeah. there was seven. What I love more. about them is that like, their gimmick is literally what they seem to be in real life, which is like, here is a fucking scary family. That's not a gimmick. It's not a gimmick. That's not a gimmick. And they play that, they're yeah. like, yeah. They're the ultimate, like... Who is it? Like, Danielson had the story... Was it Danielson? It's in his book about... Um, watch, he, doing an independent show in England, maybe yeah, what yeah. he was doing, the, like, the Butlins, the Butlins yeah. tour. And watching, like, the dad what's one. It, what's the name? What's the Roy, is it? Ricky Knight. Ricky Senior and Ricky, Ricky Junior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, like, two of them shaking down some fucking lad for a payment. <laughs> this is not to insinuate that they're uh, crooked in any way, but... No, no, uh, no. We don't know that. We don't, we don't know that, but we do know that they tend not to take shit. And yeah. Just, they're a tough family. Yeah, good for a shakedown. And you know, in what, in many ways, you want the Jamie Hayter return on the main card. That I, I thought it was going to be on the main card, and mm. that really got me thinking. I was like, "Is fucking Becky Lynch coming out?" I genuinely yes, was like, "Yes, yeah." I was going through. Jesus, and I was if like, they're saving, and particularly when Mariah May and Tony Storm came out second, I was like, "Something big is happening." Something big is happening, but it wasn't. So, but actually, in fairness to them, like they had a time limit, obviously, on the main cards. And, and they were right at that time. Now. I could imagine that Jamie Hayter popped a fucking a, a couple more boys for them based on like zero hour did well, exactly what see, it was. There you go. That's the point. Do. It was yeah. such a hot zero hour that anybody who was on the fence about the card was going. There was two things in the zero hour that in my mind were designed to pop the buy by red. One was Jamie Hayter. It's like, fuck, we're getting her on the man card. Yeah. Jeez. And she also like she had a fucking old boy sequence going down. Yeah, yeah, down that was fucking red the entire family get yeah. into the ring. It was fucking beautiful. What, she's so, what so way, great. And any disappointment I felt about the fact that like, oh, she's not coming out in like maybe the Sasha Brit match. Yeah, yeah. Completely dissipated because but, she just looked like a fucking force in nature. Yeah, a wrecking machine, like. Amazing. And, and like, uh, people are giving Teresa shit online, but I just thought her heel work was fucking brilliant. Pure heel. And you know what? It's going to be good when Jamie finally faces her, like, because Jamie Hatter's yeah. on a wrecker. I hope it's all out, because, like... Oh, so do I. It's made that, that feud immediately hot. I think yeah. Soraya's been floundering for a long time. Massive. And her and Harley Cameron are a really good duo. Ooh, great act. They just need to chop off the outcasting and find something different. Yeah, know, yeah. Um, and then just let Jamie wreck her, like, you know what I mean? Let Jamie wreck her. And... I think so. Trying to do like they're, you know, the British women's wrestling version of fucking Goldberg and uh, Brock Lesnar yeah, WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah. Fucking Just do a fucking seven, mi- seven minute reckon unit match. Yeah, absolutely. And let the like a Paul Heyman go- style yeah. main event spam through the barricades, yeah. all that kind of shit. I think and, it's, uh, yeah. Because Jamie's like, get that woman like a back up to the top of the oh, division yeah. again straight away. Her Murray May is going to be gold. That's going to be gold. Her, yeah. ma- Jamie and Sasha, that should be in oh, my man. mind. Yeah, that's your a long dream term, match. Long term, that is, your yeah. build for that. Like that's um, a big pair for you match early next year or something. Uh, like, you know, like ultimately, I don't think, I don't think Brit is cutting the mustard in that regard. Nope. We'll I, get to that. Uh, I, I think Willow Nightingale's got a shot, but, big time. Uh, but I think, you know, I, I think Jamie Hayter is your she's the future number one baby face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's the future of the division. In my opinion, anyway. Um, and then another thing that I really liked on the pre-show that was designed, I think, at selling the the main show was they did all the trios entrances. That was class. And I was like, you know, if you're sat there, so hard with House of Black coming out yeah. in that, like. So um, if you're sat there just watching the pre-show, right, and you see the entrances for a match, the garb on the lads, and then you're like. Am I really not going to watch this match now after I watch the fucking end? I see all these boys going out in the best of rig out yeah. the ring. <laughs> right, all right, I'll part with oh, me God, fucking... I'll part with me fucking... Here's 22 quid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, opening show starts, hot, trios... Yeah, they went hard with a big... Uh, a multi-man ladder match. Mm. Um, Before we get into the actual match, I'm sick of fucking ladder matches. They're getting a little bit overexposed. They're getting a little bit, you know, hell in a cell circuit 2018. They are, aren't they? <laughs> no, <laughs> this... The, use them when you need them. Do you need them here? Like, you know, is there anything else you can do, you know? I know, surely there's something else you can do. 
And I know you can't... Like, They're you know, a great spectacle for a stadium show because of the... Yes, I get that. Yeah, you know, yeah. the, the, the visual of it, it really helps. And there was comically large ladders and comically small ladders. Com- with, oh, the best combination like, that you, you know, need for a good ladder yeah. match. Um, not an absolutely crazy hat. No, it was a good fun match. Yeah. Uh, I thought Shayna Wayne was a great contribution she's to it. She's fucking awesome. She's really it's leveling It's actually up. like crazy that... I know she's been around the business... Uh, White, she's never been a featured performer, I don't think. Never. She's, like, she's the daughter of Moondog Moretti. Yeah, she's and she was married to Buddy up, Wayne. Married to Buddy Wayne. Uh, but um, she she's really been fantastic she's in, been not, in that role. She's but been, she never... I know she did modelling and stuff when she was younger. Yeah. Not, but she's never had an on-screen wrestling presence, I don't think. Yeah, and it's just a great character and it's slotted in so well. Um, I mean, there was uh, like the, the patriarchy were fantastic and that teased mm. the turn between... Kill switch. Kill switch and Christian, which came into play later yeah. on in a very unexpected way. I yeah, was, I was like, "What the fuck is?" I, en- I enjoyed that. Actually, I, I really did enjoy it, it. I, at the time, but I did enjoy that. I'm hard pressed not to enjoy anything Christian does. Oh, he's fucking awesome. He's, you know what? The, my favorite part of this match was so simple: is when they gang jump Christian. Yeah, all of them on the outside of the ring. It was like it felt so. It was cathartic. Like I know like, it was so cathartic. Now. I have a, I have a big like I have a big comedy source spot for like funny runs. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I love a I love a good comedy run. I love <laughs> seeing somebody run away in a panic. Yeah, it's just fucking. It just tickles me. Christian has got one of the best comedy runs in wrestling. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, because he he gives it his heart and soul, and he looks so deathly afraid of what's he's, coming like, after him. That guy gives so much of himself, and he's a coward. He, I, the cowards in wrestling are hard to point because we're so like fucking used to that like the Vince McMahon coward the version of a coward which yeah, was yeah. a comedy coward yeah which made guys look pathetic whereas it's good, Christian, it's, it's good to have a coward who's like who genuinely looks like he's in fear of his life yeah and he's he really doesn't, he doesn't the look pathetic like. he doesn't look pathetic with it yeah oh, he's so good he's so good uh, and then Pac and um, Claudio and Wheeler you go over new trios champions I did not see the most recent Dynamite I immediately <laughs> went oh this is set up for Moxley coming back and yeah uh, he's goes. like why he's back here and also everyone's got titles apart from me yeah yeah just a great way for Moxley to potentially melt down uh, um, but yeah, yeah like a- apparently Lucha Bro- like confirmation if you need a Lucha Brothers oh, that's, are out that's there, Lucha yeah. Brothers out I, I, I would imagine that was supposed to be Lucha Brothers spot so, so the, the scuttlebutt goes on the yeah. dirt sheet spot I don't know um, it, I mean it was like a makeshift the trios division has done a really good job of not Given being makeshift him, but they've not been makeshift yeah. they've really rewarded and honouring the shit on the stables they have in AW yeah. um, but th- this was a bit of a mismatch team but then ultimately you're going like no he's from Newcastle which like, is as close to Blackpool yeah. as you're going to get on that roster when you see he's them together you're like, perfectly. this makes perfect a sense a gang of miserable bastards who yeah. are technically the most amazing wrestlers in the world like, it's, like, it, it's actually now looking at them it's like yeah, he should have been. He should have been all along. He should have been there all Why along is he with the two guys in masks. So I hope they really make a good running storyline out of that. Yeah, and even me too, like me about too. you know, Pac's the, the grumpiest of the bastards. He's the he's the ultimate bastard. He's, like. He, so like, just him trying Pac, to settle in with a faction again. Pack and Will Ospreay end it all out. Yeah, that would be, be interesting. Fucking yeah, that can't wait. Class. I believe it's only their uh, second ever singles match. Yeah, they did it in the the British. It was a Red Pro or one of them? I'm not exactly sure where yeah. it was, and but they, that's like six years ago or something. Yeah, it would be it'll be so great to see them. Yeah, and they're both kind of at their their peak, like probably oh, yeah, to my mind, two best British wrestlers in the world. Um, yeah, yeah, English wrestlers in the world. English wrestlers in the world, <laughs> to be specific. And then we go into uh, Tony Storm and Mariah May. Yeah, I don't know what I was doing in that slot. You know, kept having Chris Jericho screaming in my head, like you know, like the you know the second match in the card is always the worst. It's the worst slot, the death but slot for any wrestlers to get. It was fucking great. <laughs> yeah, like this is the thing. Like I, it was it, completely it, it, compelling. Um, it definitely felt like it was happening too early because you're going, your instincts are going. Oh, like the hometown, is, the whole heat, like the hometown woman is winning, but they're doing that in the second spot. Mm. Um, they did a great job of keeping her heel. She slapped her own mother. She slapped her own mother. I got just so confused. I was watching this back when I was like, I was like, and I was trying to think of the logic of it. I was like, oh, um, I, I had a few shandies uh, while I was watching. Lovely. A few cans during the pre-show. Happy days. Um, but I got the order. The best way to but do I, it, but I, was, I was explaining that and then like I got the order mixed up and I was like, oh, Tony went and hugged Mariah's mother. So then Mariah came out and slapped Tony. No, the hug was after exactly. one. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, I, I fucking three, three sheets to the wind by, by that stage. Like, <laughs> like, There's I a lot of the show left, John. <laughs> well, well, here's where I tap out, everyone. <laughs> well, I passed out. <laughs> I was gone. I was gone. <laughs> Um, um, yeah, yeah but, uh, but I, I had to order 
of a, the order of a wrong, and then I was looking at it again afresh on the Monday. Oh, with, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, and I was going, no, was she just decked her mother for what reason? I don't know, because she's a fucking bitch. That's that was right. it. Yeah. My, mom, my mom's here to cheer for me. I'm yeah, gonna fuck her. her. Yeah, how dare you, mother? So I you, understood. Right? Like I thought I. But I, that's something that can be revealed about her character down the line. You know, like yes. six, eight, 12 months. If because I could see what her. Why would she start slapping other people's mothers? Yeah, class. You know what I mean? Yeah, if she slapped her own mother, there's nothing she won't do for the title. The mother slapper, like fucking mother slapper. You can't put so your mother at ringside because she'll clean her out. She will fuck because it looked like a good it slap. Was too. The kind of slap that you could only probably do to your own mother. Like, you know, if you're best, like second best sl- slap on the shot. The, like the person you trust most in the world. Yes, like, great man. Look, sorry now, but you're. I'm going to hit you, but I'm not going to hit you that hard. Like in fact, here's how hard I hit you. Like, yeah, yeah. What's the mother finish? I really liked it. Yeah, I just thought it was. They didn't rush anything in terms of the story. I think the psychology of this has been so impeccably booked. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And it worked so well for Tony to falter. Yeah. Putting her away. Because Maria May basically laid it, the cards going, but I will go further than you're ever going to go. And the, the beauty of it is, is that you've made a new star in Maria. And yeah. also, you've, you've elevated Tony's star. Tony's gotten better and better. Like, it was rocky with that gimmick begin. Remember her first few title defences? It was Even patchy, and I think it, it what, what really fuck. did not work was, what didn't help her was, <laughs> it's just people going, is this character a heel or a face? Yeah, what the fuck's going on? And it was mostly kind of a heel, and I kind of, you know, but it's it, it's finding its feet, actually. Oh, exactly. yeah. And I, like I a think delu- delusional, um, you know, a delusional movie star. Uh, I didn't thought this could never work. Yeah, it's really worked. But it's gotten over massively. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, like This was a great piece of business, John. It was a great piece of business, you know what Second I mean? I think she's, pulled, she's, she's kind of pulled off, she's finished what the Vaudevillian, uh, Vaudevillian started. <laughs> it's like the Vaudevillians, the Vaudevillians. Vaudevillian. The two old timey boys. Yeah, yeah, Simon Gotch was one of them. Gotch, yeah, and uh, Aiden, Aiden English. Aiden English, that but, was um, one, Do you yeah. like, how, how is this kind of, kind of going to work? Like this kind of... It fucking worked. Yeah, they, they got, like she really took it, like she took it to a new level and she really made it into something that... Um, I think just by the nature of the fact that they based the storyline on like All About Eve and like yeah, they yeah. were looking at it's classic just, Hollywood 1940s like going such what, a what's the storyline between friends turned in it's such a fascinating idea to borrow from that though I think for wrestling in general, if yeah. wrestling's going to get into this sphere of going, actually, we just take a lot of stories from like 1930s, I'm 1940s, doing fucking taxi pulp fictions and adventures and swashbucklers. Yeah, do and do taxi driver. <laughs> that is not go- Hollywood Golden Age. Do taxi it's driver. It's the 1970s. <laughs> what fucking wrestling story later? The new wave. Into- <laughs> the new wave. Oh, man. Taxi driver. Double who, indemnity. Who's your, who's, your, who's your Travis Bickle? Um, Jesus, who could be Travis Bickle? MJF shaves a motor. MJF Mohawk rescuing Rio head. from the Godfather's <laughs> clutches. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the pimp? The, the Godfather. Bring back the Godfather. Unless somebody else is going to start doing uh, a, a pimp. So again. speaking of good pieces of business, <laughs> next we have Hook versus Jericho FTW title. I'm not trying to kick a man when he's down. I went to the toilet. Yes. Uh, right, so. And I could not get there quick enough. My cue to go to the toilet was seeing Fozzie. That was exactly mine. I was I never. I was actually in fuzzy. my seat until I realised Hook wasn't kicking me yeah, off, yeah. and then I miss uh, I miss Hook. I had to rewatch Hook's uh, entrance the next day because I was in the jack still. Yeah. Well, like um, you know, I have been now many times. Um, I've had unsolicited fuzzy. I've seen. I feel like I've seen fuzzy live, and that's not something I ever wanted. Yeah. I mean, you know, fuck off, Chris. <laughs> Stop making me watch your crap band. Yeah, like you played last year. You played Wembley. You're yeah. well done, mate. You're you're just like Queen. Oh, you and Queen up there, the two two of the greatest it. bands ever. You played Wembley. You and Freddie Mercury. Did no, you, he's did you greatest live. <laughs> what the fuck? Just give over, like put yeah, us out of misery. Just, and then right, so we get the match, right? And Joe, you know, I kind of liked about the match. Cricket balls. The cricket balls are fantastic. I was also a fan. I was a fan of the cricket balls. I'm glad we agree. Yes, uh, and then. What else I liked about the match? Taz stuck a Taz mission. Best part of the match. Makes the match completely worth it yeah. alone. Generally a bit of a, a sloppy hardcore match. Um, but I think it's it's put an end to this storyline. The, yeah, the I, stereo I Taz missions was absolutely was brilliant. worth it. I uh, wanted to see, I wanted, like Taz just made up for Jericho. Uh, yeah, yeah. And like it was pretty shit match. But don't really have, you know, we've highlighted the 
good things about it, which you know, refute people. People also people vibing with Big Bill quite big a lot. Big Bill, something. Big yeah, he's he's he certainly he up. He's onto something. Yeah, he tried to cut a heel promo on Dynamite again to shook off that yeah he's so good he just need. he needs he, like he needs a, he just needs some kind of a he has some a, kind of gimmick that's not a, the biggest lad you know wears, wearing jeans yeah like he has a, a great real life story as well after you know he alcoholism after getting released oh, yeah. from WWE yeah. and then getting in mad shape and like going literally back to the bottom of the bottom of the wrestling Wait, what, sphere what, what, and working his way back up through just hard work like I just don't get the jeans what is it I don't know what size leg does he have too big like is he like a a 36 42 or just, something? A, just a bit of a country dancing vibe like off there is a of country dancing like he'd rock into Matt Miller's there now and you wouldn't bat on on even with the top off you wouldn't <laughs> yeah, bat yeah, like, hi. he's from <laughs> South Virginia <laughs> 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 anyway, let's get past this fucking Jericho shite. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, pass it anyway. Uh, great, just, great finish in that it finished. It finished and Taz was match. involved. And Taz was involved. Great to see Taz get uh, one more Taz mission on someone. Yeah. Even though he couldn't get his arm fully around the neck. He really couldn't. No, um, I don't know if that's his, you know, immobility. He, he was injuries. probably doing two hours of yoga and fucking, uh, you know, fucking loose Alexander technique up. and everything before he went out. <laughs> And he's still <laughs> he's still well, it could have been the same. Well, like, he didn't really have it hooked in like No no, but sure look. Brian Key, fair play with Fair play Brian Key worked over farmer too, actually. Yeah. Uh we move on then to uh the AEW World Tag Team title three way match between the Young Bucks, FTR, and uh the acclaimed. Some highlights. The biggest highlight for me was uh Max Caster's line in the rap likening FTR to, to the, the EDL. EDL. Yeah, fantastic. I, as soon as I heard it, I cackled. I was like, yes. Yes, yeah. great. Like, no, the tag division in AEW has never felt as ice fucking cold. It never felt as ice cold, and they have so many good tag teams. It's insane. What the fuck is going on? I don't know. Is it the Young Bucks? Have they can't just... Be. They've, no, they've normally been pretty... I know, but is this the first time generous. ever that they've miscalculated? Not the first time, I would say, but... There's a lot of miscalculation. No, going I on. mean in terms of their character and presentation. It's it, the, like when it, have they not got something over? The split, the whole split between them and Tony Khan, that angle is just too dormant. It's there's not, not there's on. not not enough bubbling. No there's not enough bubbling, and they should use that as a way to heat the tag division. And it's hurting at least, Okada, at least, and it's hurting Okada. You you you've set your stall for a very big corporate like battle type storyline, and then done not in it. And you, you, you saw what WWE did with a similar-ish storyline going all the way into WrestleMania. Yeah. It's like, why is it so cold? You've got like a potentially really hot story and it's cold in every division it's involved in. Yeah, it's hurting lots of things around. Particularly the tag division. Like, fuck me. Tell us the story. Like, they claimed they're getting fines. Great. Okay, but like... Yeah. But why were FTR in it? Because they cost the acclaim the title that one time? You can't. You just... It's just... A, you just need to put them on the cards. I know. They're FTR. Yeah. Tracksuits were mint, weren't they? They were fucking deadly. Unreal. They were deadly. Look, in terms of how the match was wrestled, this was like a really well-built, technically proficient, and should have been exciting wrestling match based on everything that was on the screen in the ring. Yeah. But it just didn't get over. No, it didn't. It and like, it didn't really you, ignite as a match. It was just, it was a little bit cumbersome. It wasn't a bad ma- match by any yeah, means. Like, very well wrestled. There were some like, great moments in it and stuff. Grand. All right, nice one. Grand. Guys. Grand. Let's get to the Grizzly Young Veterans. Yeah, fucking awesome. Yeah, I was delighted to see them yeah, pop I up. I wish they hadn't them. kind of wasted them on a very low key, you know, collision debut, whatever it was, a couple of uh, Yeah, a couple of months ago. Without suppose, much fanfare. Yeah. That would have been a great way to just debut them. I know. I like the, look, they didn't get much of a reaction from the crowd, but like these guys aren't super well known. Not uh, in this gimmick on a main stage because yeah. they got that, they were stuck in that fucking dyad thing in yeah, the, the, NXT yeah. for a very long time. And they, like, if you see them work their best work, it's like not like super. <laughs> Zach Gibson is not your go-to supernatural character. What the fuck? Zach Gibson is the least, and he's an amazing talker. He's shockingly good on the mic. Shockingly good on the mic. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, and great, Drake they, is, they both Drake have great is solid look. out. They both have a great look. Great upside. You know, uh, pure scouts. Pure scouts. Like what was? Um, uh, Zach Gibson's indie move was called the, the Shankly Gates. Nice, fucking brilliant. That's like, what you know I mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, look, they weren't going to get a huge crowd reaction, but you've put them in a spot now where that will build over time. Because I think when the masses see these guys work, yeah, you're going and to be like, I just, fuck, I, they're a top tier tag team. Like the, the fact that Grizzly Young Veterans are going to a feud with FTR now is 
in, infinitely more exciting than anything in a, in in in, uh, in the tag division. In the tag division, yeah. yeah. And I will also in WWE's tag division yeah. as well. Like if you if you matter. think of like you know when Mariah May debuted or Jamie Hayter debuted or lots of these people that weren't super well known, uh, and look at them now, I think you, we could see a similar trajectory. Yeah. With Grizzled Young Vets. Yeah, I think they could have a good run. I think yeah. they're going to have and a good I, run. And I hope they, they're the ones to topple the Bucks. Maybe. Like, could do, do with the recess, but... Haven't beat fucking FTR at All Out and then haven't beat the Bucks in six weeks. Yeah. And Just then plug like, in a hot new tag team. Made team. Yeah. You know, that's what tag division years ago were when, like, Steiner Bros had come in, yeah. wreck everyone, win the titles. Eight months later, fucking... R- Road, Road Warriors, Warriors and knock in. in Wreck everyone Win the title yeah. Do that Do that Super yeah. hot team then Yeah that's the And like you established Those guys as being On the level of FTR And Because you know Another thing we don't Talk about a lot is The Bucks are hitting 40 Yes FTR are hit 40 plus yeah. I think Cash is a bit younger But Like They're getting towards The latter end of They are Their physical prime yeah. You need to start Establishing guys Like Grizzle Young Vets Yeah and like I mean there's been A couple of uh, a couple of younger teams that have gone over, but like nobody with any mad heat. No, nobody you know, has like the acclaimed were as good as it got in that yeah, regard. They, yeah. they heated up so much it got. They, They're now they just feel a little bit stale to me as well. They're like, also a little bit stale. Like, was, we were talking about this, I don't know, but like tag gimmicks like that, they generally only get like a year run. But this has been going on. This claim thing has gone on three years, exact same gimmick. Yeah. The, the only kind of change in that whole time is daddy ass. Yeah, and then when they had that kind of merger that didn't really work with uh, Bullet Club Gold. That yeah, was a bit yeah. of a mess. There could have yeah. been a better storyline told could have there. Been great. That's the thing. I think like it's just a general problem with a lot of AW booking. It's been too fucking done by crayons. Yeah. When uh, and then it was done. It's like it feels like everything is just like right. We know we're doing an angle this week about this, but we don't haven't really put any thought into it. And then yeah. we get to the building and we just and they're leaning together. too far into tropes. Whereas like out the gate, they were kind of all about subverting that stuff. Yeah. You know. Anyway, but uh, onto one of the best matches on the card, John. I thought. The yes, casino fucking oh, gauntlet. So much to talk about in this one. I mean, probably best gauntlet gauntlet match I've seen, like yo, ever in any style. They've of landed gauntlet. on a concept that can become. I know, like there's so many different casino variations between ladder matches and yeah. battle royals, and this is their one. But this, this is their royal rumble. I would use them all, but make this one like the, yeah. This is your royal rumble. Yeah, you could do. I don't year. know how many guys you can comfortably do that with, but like... Well, I think it's designed to have 21, but they've never got to 21. So Because somebody's got pinned. Yeah, because yeah, it, it can yeah. end at any time. So that's one of the things with the Royal Rumble is you end up watching the Royal Rumble and you're having a, a lot of fun with the surprises and the entrance and the countdown, but you know it's not finished for another 35 minutes. Yeah. 25, you know what I mean? Whereas this... It can, can end, end at any time. So you have the danger, but you also get the entrances I know. and the surprises and, they, and the and fun. And they can tell as many stories as they want yes. with the exact amount of guys that they have in that ring. And that's yes. exactly what they did. They don't did. have to do 30. It was, they don't have to do 30. It was a phenomenal bit of work. And I think so it, good. It, it made it one of their hottest gimmick matches now going forward. I yeah. think that match, and it should be reserved for stadium shows. It just, if you can. Once a year. Once a year. Treated like the Royal Rumble. Returns, uh, you know, crossovers. Yeah. Setting up uh, debuts, whatever you need well, to do. That's your time. That's your time to and use it. Give the women so one as well. Like moments of the match for you. Um, the big one was obviously Nigel McGuinness. I lost my shit. I think oh I popped hard for like that was just. I, I wasn't expecting. I knew he's kind of maybe teasing a comeback. Yeah. I thought there was something going to be something with him and Brian this year. Sam, Sam, yeah. But him showing up made sense as to why people like, uh, you know, your Kip Sabians or your, your Tommy Billington. You don't or, want to bro- blow the British That's the big, That's yeah. the big Brit return there, yeah. you know, and it was amazing. He looked great. He looked great. Looked incredible. I'm so yeah. glad he had that moment. I think his last match was like a fucking Indian in front of 200 people somewhere. Yeah, like The guy people. did not get the send off he ever deserved no. as a wrestler. And you, you look at the end of the show, you talk about send offs for great wrestlers from you know, that have been around a long time. Nigel never had anything. He just shows up with a commentator one day in NXT. Uh, yeah, and he made him in a documentary there. Like, he was yeah. fucking, you know, sad in the car an awful lot. So he was very was like, sad in the car. He was a lot of sad in the car. And he was just, like, he was obviously struggling to come to terms with how his career ended. Like, yeah. well, he had great moments in that WWE match. WWE contract with. snatch off him. Oh, man, it was sad. Anyway, great to see him he back. He had great moments with Zach. He had great moments with Okada. Oh, like, like even going out to the ring, I was so fucking, I was so uh, excited because I know yeah. he's immediately going straight in with Okada. Yeah. It's like, this is fucking brilliant. It's unbelievable. Like, there's no messing around here. No, you're in with Okada, <laughs> like straight off the yeah. bat, like, you know. It's fantastic. Great exchanges in it. Um, 
Uh, Ricochet's debut. Ricochet's debut. He looked sharp as fuck. He looked sharp. Didn't he? He looked like... like he ran like, that snazzy big gold chain. Yeah, he was like... It's like, okay, Ricochet's fucking back. He's back. Oh, I don't think he had a bad run in WWE whatsoever. I think he had Just, a pretty solid run, all things he Yeah, like he had some good matches with Walter and all that. I think if you come out with a run where, look, sure. things weren't what they should have been for him, yeah. he should have had a fucking proper feud with, like, not proper feud, but like, that short program we had with Brock Lesnar, like, he should have never been jobbed out. That, that quick, been, yeah. That yeah. should have been a fucking six minute Ricochet cannonballing himself at yeah. Lesnar match. And that really, I think, for him probably showed the. The right. value that I'm, they saw I in him. Literally, they see me as here. Glorified jobber. Yeah, glorified jobber. Someone who can come in have a deadly six like, minute match. I don't th- like not that he was a jobber, but like in a very high level, obviously been just a jobber to fucking Brock. Yeah. He had runs with the US and IC title. Um, and never, I'm, never felt like he was the centre of attention with those titles. Though. No, he was always solid. Look, it'd be interesting to see. He's got personality, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Like, I, I don't know, know how much he's going to push into the main event. I don't see him personally. I don't. And maybe this is because of where he's been slotted for the last few years. And when you look at the, uh, the AEW main event picture, it's hard to see him breaking into that caliber of... Yeah. But, like, he could be a super effective... Uh, like, you could stick the TNT title on him. And have yeah, him. he's going to have great matches for the next... Well, how long is he signing in for? Probably three years, Probably anyway? three years, I'd say, yeah. Three years, yeah. have a run. Said multi-year contract, yeah. so... No, no, three or five, I suppose. No Probably harm, and he'll, he'll get to spread his wings a little bit more, try things out creatively that he wants to... Oh, yeah. Then it's it's on him. It's, on, it's up to him then, yeah, that's... Um, and then, you know, I suppose Hangman coming in and being yeah. the fucking dirtiest... The pop for Jeff Jarrett was something else, wasn't it? Sublime. It absolutely <laughs> melted my little heart. Uh, look, I'm, I'm so delighted that for the first time ever in his career, that man is having a hot baby face run. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. 2024, Jeff yeah. Jarrett is one of your uh, hottest baby your faces. Your hottest baby faces. It's He's been brilliant. Insane. I hope they utilise him. I really... I've been so pissed off with the, the way... Dustin Rhodes has been used this year. Yeah. Um, it's nice to see Jarrett been used a little bit better. Now, in fairness, Dustin's booking has really picked up in the last month. Yeah. He was also great on the pre-show. And he was great. I can't help but feel that, like, with a legend of that caliber who's working a high, as high of a standard as he has, Crazy. he should be doing stuff higher up the car, lads, because yeah. you're not going to have him too much longer. And to see and the same with Jarrett. got in Cardiff as well oh, yeah. at, uh, on the collision. Like, that was just... That was like fucking Austin 99 levels <laughs> of baby face love. He, like, was, wasn't he was hot in that territory. <laughs> fucking unreal. So yeah. great to see for him. And then shock winner, John. Yeah, Christian Cage. Shock. And the fact that he's not immediately challenging all out leads me to think that they're plotting a decent yeah, long-term storyline. They, they, they must have something in mind. And also, like, I just... I wouldn't be surprised if Christian Cage does beat Danielson, like... No, because... Mm, no. I don't Who do you think is beating Danielson now? Uh, I think I think Hangman is. Do you think? I think so. I feel like maybe Swerve in October in, in Washington might be... I thought that myself, but what I think happens now is Hangman beats Swerve at all out in the cage. Yeah. Hangman then beats Danielson in Danielson's homestead and then you do the long chase with Swerve after Hangman. I think there's more money that's in that really, than that's some, I think that's some very good long-term booking yeah, there. Yeah. Like, Because, right, let's say you go back to Swerve in October. Yeah, in Washington. I know it's his home state as well, and it would be great and all that. But then, where do you go? I just don't know where they're going to Christian Cage. I don't know where, like what they're slot. I mean, I'm really yeah. nervous now. Where I'm going? Oh, he's up against Shaq Perry next. Yeah, um, which at least is keeping the. I think that's going to be a great event. Potentially going to be great. But please, Jesus Christ, Tony Khan, if by some chance you're listening, can you just give us a match with Danielson and Joe before anything rub winds down? Just do it. Just do. Please do it once. Just do it. Fucking dynamite. Do it fucking yeah. yesterday, man. Just yeah. do it. Get it done. Yeah, that's get it true. done. But uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see where Christian goes. I think, you know, in terms of like da- Danielson for the first time playing into his status as a father of two. Yes. In a storyline way. Um, with which we will. The patriarchy. We'll mention more in the main event. But uh, yeah, Christian's prime for as an antagonist with this version of Yeah, I, I think we're going like, I, I think going with Jack Perry for All Out makes perfect sense on a two week build because you've had them playing off each other quite a lot over the summer with it was Perry beat got the pin on uh, Danielson at Dublin or nothing in the Anarchy match um, so it makes sense then that his first challenger is the last guy to pin him yeah uh, and you know they had interactions in, at other times over the summer as I well, do so. get so much relief now that I was watching AW when certain things happen I'm like oh actually they were they I were thinking they, they, they were long term booking you think like right because uh, it felt they just got it all just disappeared for a while and now did all you see threads of it coming in you're yeah, like yeah. oh no, there's, no they're, they're thinking there's about there's a couple stuff. of things there stewing yeah, yeah, yeah they're thinking about stuff uh, so we go on to the next match then and uh, that was a great piece of business but we're on to the next match 
fucking superb with Osprey and MJF. Yeah, fantastic. I, it was just the right feud for the two of them at the right yeah. time in the right place. The stars aligned on this one, and they've both been brilliant. Both been brilliant. And like, you know, we spoke about it. We were in the WhatsApp group speaking about it. It's absolutely insane to me how crisp Will Ospreay is going at the speed he goes at 25 minutes plus into a match. Belly full of Nando's. Belly full of fucking Nando's. That man is full to the neck, corn on the cob. <laughs> Sweeping it out, fucking mash fucking the whole, the whole, the whole shebang. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I listened to him on the Off Menu podcast and uh, the way he was talking about food. Yeah, man, that man loves his food. But, sure, he got like, you see how much he, he loves his Nando's. Up, like, you know? yeah. he, he genuinely loves Nando's. still haven't sponsored him. It's fucking insane because he got he he got the sponsor of the well, other I've never thing had Nando's, left. but because of him, no, oh, no, no, I never had cheeky Nando's. Oh my god, when I lived in the Middle East, I could get Nando's delivered, and I by God did I get Nando's delivered regularly. Delivered where? To me, apparently. To the desert. <laughs> where do you live? In the desert. And they bring me my Nando's. I could get Nando's delivered, like some fucking drone knocking into you. Just some lad driving up on his little motorbike. Here's your Nando's, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much. I've never had it, but this uh, this episode fantastic. is now sponsored by Nando's. Yeah. Um, that's a move. The cheeky Nando's yeah. got it in there. Uh, Speaking of moves he got in, <laughs> Tiger Driver. The Tiger Driver. So look, the match is built around the idea of, will he do the Tiger Driver? Danielson could came he up pass it? Could this man who has done it, to people things. he likes before, yeah. could he do it to a man who he, he truly despises. loves? And you know, and you the had, yes. You had Danielson coming up to him on Collision last week, or uh, Dynamite. Do it. Drop him on that fucking stack of dimes. And by God, did he drop him? He Ooh. dropped him on that stack of dimes. He didn't. It wasn't a Kenny Omega. I'm going to take it. It wasn't like Kenny's genuinely dead now. Yeah, yeah. And like, you know, Danielson took a very safe one. Uh, Kenny took a totally unsafe one. Now, I know Kenny came out afterwards and said, You don't know what you're talking about. It was safe. I was like, You just got dropped in your fucking head. It's not safe. We all saw it, man. We <laughs> saw you get dropped in your head. Yeah. Uh, Max was somewhere in between. Yeah, he, seemed, uh, he seemed okay. Daniel Garcia came back in to play a part in it. That's going to be a super hot feud going forward. I was a little sad he didn't dance at him, but maybe maybe it wasn't appropriate. I think this. I think what we're going to see now is him phase out the dance. And he's going to go fucking psycho. Yeah. Yeah, I think that seems to be a vibe. I think it's a good yeah. way to go with Daniel Garcia. Great and Derek facing that all out now as well, I believe. MJF Great. and Daniel Garcia. And Will Ospreay can move on to Got Pac it. and it's other pack. things. You Great, know? everything's er, and brilliant. Look, they're, they're left at one and one, so there's more... Uh, so much more to go with them than the line. You, can, you don't need to do the trilogy straight away. You can do Yeah, it I think that's months. that's been a really successful part of AEW's book and is yeah. like leaving things for trilogies. So yeah. you can actually have a feud and then when you go back to that feud, there'll be fresh things to play with in it. Yeah. And they've done that really well. Rather than the you know, the old the old way of booking, particularly WWE, which is like do do run something months. into the into yeah. the ground and we'll then never let them interact months. again. Yeah. <laughs> like if you go back to like eighties boxing and you look at like all the great boxing feuds of the eighties with like the Four Kings, Leonard Hagler, Hearns, and um, my favourite of them all, whose name I can't remember. Uh, they had trilogies, but they were spaced out over six, seven, eight years. So do do, do the first two yeah. in quick succession, and then six years later to do the third one. And both guys have moved up a division and won multiple world titles, yeah. and now you have this like fresh take on, a, on an old feud like yeah. you can do that with Osprey and MJF yeah it's there it's in the tank waiting to go looking forward to it speaking of uh, moving on Brit and Mercedes um, Mercedes had her working boots on she worked her fucking arse off <laughs> she, <laughs> like, she's worried about their paying her and oh, it's probably she, fucking loads yeah look, not yeah. enough to get a decent breakfast no. I can't believe somebody Jesus Christ. how is it somebody send that Frank. woman to Witherspoons. To a, a Witherspoons. A fucking travesty. That would never happen in Ireland. No. I'd have I'd have personally brought her to... She'd uh, be... You know. Into... Uh, uh, I don't know. Where would you go? Where, where would the you go? Algarve bring her? Grill. I'd bring her to, I would, <laughs> she would have a great time to Algarve Grill. The Algarve Grill. grill. Bring her to Algarve. <laughs> That's a lure. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Top class. Yeah, top class. Uh, um, but geez. like, you know what I mean? Anywhere. What's Brit sandbagging? I just don't... I just don't think... Brit's been on the shelf for a long time. I felt mm. like she was just not up to up to pass. I think she's had one TV match in like well over a year. I don't. Not, that, that, not that Mercedes has a shit ton more, but like, is it that she's rusty or that she's just not at that? If level? she's sandbagging, I don't know, man. I, I'd say fuck her at this stage. She's going around throwing slaps at people's girlfriends backstage or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know what the crack is with her, but like, she was always worth. I suppose any of the perceived stress. I don't know. But if she if she's sandbagging opponents, I know her and Tundra Rosa had a lot of problems. Yeah, 
it's starting to feel like she's the problem. Yeah, and like this is what happened in WWE with like, you know, it happened with Nye and Charlotte and it happened with Charlotte. You look at the comment down, I suppose, Charlotte, yeah, Charlotte yeah. and Becky, but you're only, you're not, you're really stopping your co-workers here from being able to do their job yeah. safely and effectively. Yeah, I, and I don't want to cast aspersions onto that. I would think that Brit is, I would hope that she's just a bit rusty. Yeah, that's what my hope was. It was like, right, she's had one or two oh, man, yeah, matches like, in 18 months. A lot of sequences were not good in this match. Clunky that, as that fuck. Been said, not, no, it wasn't a terrible match. Not a terrible match no, by it wasn't any a means. Match. I, um, I thought it was, it was still very compelling. Yeah. They've done a good job on the story. Yeah. They're two fucking massive stars. I know, yeah, but just it felt like Mercedes was carrying the fuck as much as she could yeah. to a mediocre match. Like She spent, spent, t- spent 10,000 on her ring gear for that. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Why is she getting paid? Fuck me. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then we move on because I don't care about them. I don't even want to talk about it. I don't want to speculate on... I don't know where they're going after this. Um, it looked like uh, Mercedes pinned her one, two, three in the middle during it, and she is moving on. And yeah, that match really could have done with a dose of Jamie Hater, but yeah, not but to be. I, is that telling as well that Jamie was like, I don't want to come back in a Brit match. I don't want to be associated with her. I don't know. It was good that she I had she like had that. legit beef with fucking Soraya and yeah, uh, uh, and just Soraya. Was there someone else or no Soraya? The outcast. The outcast. So whatever. Yeah. Ruby's, whatever. Ruby's off. She's on maternity Ruby's, leave. She's, she's on. Her. Had her honeymoon. On maternity yeah. leave. Fair play. She takes some time off. Um, and then we go on to Jack Perry and Darby Allen. A match that was quite evident straight away. I think by the way we were talking about, it had some time cut. It had some time cut. It ran. T- it ran about ten minutes. Yeah. Then they tried to squeeze as much as they could in in that time. Yeah. But you know, look, it was good. It just. Yeah. Never got to the level you're expecting. They didn't have a lot of time to work with it, but I thought, you know what, for 10 minutes it was a good setup match for the main event. Yeah. A um, lot of violence, two of the best. Didn't overstay its welcome. Because I think after the Osprey match, the crowd in the arena were just waiting for Danielson. Pretty much. And also, look, in fairness, they really pop people off, like, like having Sting coming out. Yeah, that was fucking brilliant. Like, who's going to have any complaints about seeing and, Sting? No, and then the Bucks... Just like, you know, again, to speaking of comedy running, yeah. like running for their lives from Sting, not this cunt again. You, I know, but great, like again. it lined up so well with everything that happened in Revolution. It was yeah. a good payoff. It's like, great for the, it's, the fans. It's almost say. like the Bucks are now eternally going to be running from Sting for the rest of their lives and never and so get they should. And so they should. <laughs> Shall we get into oh, the main event, John? Yes, let's talk about... One of the greatest wrestling matches ever to exist. Of all time. Like, easily. As Featuring. a viewing experience, in terms of pure emotion, it was. I was in fucking ribbons. I was in did everywhere. You, can I ask a question? I had a fucking... Did, did you cry? Did I cry? I... Or did you feel teary? I felt teary. I, felt I don't teary. think I cried. I, I did not, feel... No liquid. A lot of pangs of emotion. Yes. Um, I, I was too full of ale. Like, <laughs> but they're all, can't, I, I just can't cry when I'm too full of ale. I'd been full of ale, I'd have been sobbing all over. I'd either need three less or three <laughs> more. <laughs> uh, like, from the very start, the final countdown entrance. Amazing. Sensational. Fucking Swerve's entrance. Amazing. West Side Gun, who's a pretty big rapper. Yeah. Like. Um, amazing. Swerve. Swerve's costume. And he went out there, like, he went out on his back and he just proved that he is main event now on. He's like, leaving. You, you know, in the immediate aftermatch of the match, in your mind, it's all about Danielson. But when you think back on it, you look back on it, you're like, oh my God, Swerve put in the performance of a life. I kind of felt like that more than anything, more than winning the title. That match felt like Swerve's coronation. Yes. that and was, And I feel like that's the result of probably working this storyline and working yeah. this match with someone like Brian Danielson, who is... A fucking savant. A savant, like, <laughs> you know what is, I mean? He's the goat, like. He he really is, I think he's in the so goat, many ways. Yeah. Um, and I felt that that more than, more than losing the title made him the main eventer. Yeah, cemented, cemented him. him. Yeah. Cemented Like, he is now, he is the guy that you can put the company on his back for, fuck me, however long. Like, there was a key moment early in this match. Right, because when Swerve came out, he got a pretty... Like semi baby face reaction from the crowd. Yeah, I, which which is mad. Like, and we've seen that evolution over the last year. Like, this guy has not really refrained from his gimmick of being man who will murder you in front of your family, yeah. but man who will actively go out of his way to try and murder you in front of your yeah. family. And he, he's not getting. He, he's still getting cheered. He's not getting yeah. fucking heavy booze. So, I think the design of the match was incredible. 
very early in the match, he does the um, Death Valley driver on the apron onto the ring bell. Yeah. And from that moment on, the crowd booed the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah. It was perfect. Like, because they needed to do something early. Because it, it could only, the way the match was designed and the emotional impact of the end and Danielson fighting for his career and his family could only work against the dastardly heel. Yeah, and, had to and, be. And like, the, the, Swerve, Swerve had to tell the audience, I will murder this man in front yes. of his family and I'm going to show you that. Yeah. And so he, I'm going to make these kids cry. He drops him, Death Valley Driver, onto the ring bell. Yeah. That establishes everything. Then he busts him open and then he brings him to the family. Brings him to, the, to his family. And then he says to Danielson's daughter, Birdie, I'll send daddy home to you. I was <laughs> like, oh! Now, another piece is a genius piece of work. Birdie Danielson's outfit. The pink hat. Yes. Very deliberate, surely. How do you, Oh, maybe, it, yeah. Because when you're looking at the screen... The I hope pink, it's long-term storytelling. The pink hat stands out. Your eye is always drawn to it. So he's going he's gonna to do a home invasion in Danielson's. With a pink hat. He's going to kick over all his <laughs> polytunnels and all his fucking <laughs> veg. <laughs> he's going to go to his allotment. He's going to uproot it. Then he's going to steal this child's pink hat. But I, I just thought, like, because, like, when you're looking, you know, and there's a sea of audience in the back and they're showing the full shot of the ring. Yeah. You can always see the pink hat. You know, it's like like if she wore a brown hat, <laughs> like like the little girl at the end of Schindler's List. Yeah, literally, <laughs> literally, she was the pink hat. The, like so, oh, I don't know. I thought that's yeah. what I was going for. It was like so we can actually always like it's in focus ju- there. Yeah, focus yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, like that's their first time that they they bring out Brie. Yeah, so glad to see Brie back. It's Brilliant. actually lovely. You it was know lovely, be, wasn't it? She's yeah. got such a lovely. Um, she's got such a lovely ring presence, or like. I don't star, stage presence star quality yeah but yeah. she's very understated uh, in a way that her act with her sister wasn't an awful true yeah you know yeah, they yeah. had damn things wasn't so. understated but Brie's so inherently likeable as well yeah very true and she and, really and, and she really what, sold the concern you know I what mean. I loved as well is that section of the match where they were out at the family yeah it didn't get too hammy or overdone no it didn't, didn't overstay as well. It didn't, it didn't overstay as well. It didn't become overwrought as well. Yes. Like, that could have very easily... So, the, the Death Valley Driver on the ring bell, that was a more cerebral way of getting the heat. The low-hanging fr- fruit was to do a five-minute thing over where the family are and have it this big, dramatic, um, like, melodramatic thing, actually. Yeah. And they didn't do that. It, it was, like you said like quite understated in the whole thing yeah. and then Prince Nana danced to the family after sort of said I'm going to send your daddy home to you <laughs> <laughs> oh well I can't get no, honestly I don't think there'll ever be a time I'll get enough of that dance no and then it's perfect we it, get that moment in the match one of the greatest baby, fe- baby face comebacks of all time the kicks yeah the no kicks into Danielson face and his family I love you so much <laughs> you're like he's done he's done he's done and you know he's the type of performer that's going to go out in the most impactful way yes. possible and you know he would have absolutely fucking no hesitation about letting himself be destroyed be murdered by a lad on his way he'd love that that was the thing really like it, once I saw the finish everything else came into focus all the storytelling like cause yeah. I, even I was kind of doubting like it was like is, is Swerve Danielson the well he kicked out a biggest match they can do and then when you see it there it's like man who is stated a year in advance he's retiring for his family yeah. against man whose gimmick for the last year has been as I'll, I said I'll mess murder you in front of your family yeah. I will like I will make your family life hell <laughs> yeah like it was perfect yeah and like so you get that moment where uh, Swerve is doing the kicks and Danielson powers up and I love you so much to the family and there's blood streaming down his face. Epic. And he turns and hits the greatest wrestling slap you have ever seen in your <laughs> life. Yeah. And then, you know, they go into that section where um, Danielson does the psycho knee on Swerve and he fucking no-sells it. He no-sells the fucking thing? he brushes it off. Amazing. And you're like... Years of this been like... We've seen this move... Like, Decapitate it's people. It's felled John Cena. Yes. You know what I mean? It's felled Batista. Fuck yeah. yeah. Triple H. Triple H. Everyone. And Swerve, Swerve just, brushed it off. He just... He goes back into the uh, ring corner and he steps out and is like, you got nothing left, old man. You got nothing left. It's like... Yeah. The gunslinger, like, you know... It was amazing. I mean, I think in terms of like the crescendo of the build, yes. match, one of the greatest I've ever seen. And then, you know, you get that moment of Hangman coming out and getting swarmed by... Yeah. And because, look, Hangman needed to play a part. Yes, it I agree. It had to happen. But 
he did the perfect amount. Yeah. Again, not overwrought. No. And then, you know, then you get... It was all the, judged perfect. Perfect. They really just was. nailed everything. One, one, of the, one of the best finishes I've ever seen in wrestling. Like, one incredible. One of the most em- emotive matches. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, completely cemented Swerve, and it's put us into this really exciting now retirement run from Danielson. Yeah, As yeah. soon as he gets beaten, he'll, he'll finish And, like, full in time. terms of the stadium main event, a lot of people were calling for Hangman Swerve. No, the stadium main event is Brian Danielson. The greatest wrestler of all time. Yeah. I mean, that was the biggest thing I missed last year. Like, you know, even going to see it live. Mm. I was like, fuck. I'm, I'm like, it's not Danielson. Really, there's no Danielson. And I've never seen him live and I really would have loved to. Yeah. Um, missed my chance this year. <laughs> fuck knows now. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> but, and look, uh, he'll be back at the big stadium. He'll do, 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 you know, do an OTC, do hopefully. Oh, imagine. Or fucking out in the new park. <laughs> yeah, the new park. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably why we'll be, we'll be watching when Butlins. You know what I mean? Door. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Um, and, you know, you get the emotional finish. And one thing that we haven't really mentioned is the production from AEW for this event was a hundred times better than normal. Yeah. With the exception, I, I would say, of uh, that tracking, weird tracking shot that they did for Tony Storm's entrance where they like had oh, a yeah. drone going up into the bleachers and yeah. through a door and it just showed off way too many empty seats. But outside of that, impeccable. Like the lighting for that main event and Danielson's yeah. comeback and the yes chance and the crowd going bonkers. Camera and work was also fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. And we got the big emotional payoff at the end. What a fucking show. What a show. Where would you rank that in terms of uh, your favourite matches you've ever seen? It would probably be top five. I think so as well. That's like straight saying, yeah. in with a bullet. Yeah. Um, I don't know where exactly it would land, but I, just in terms of, uh, you know, like been a wrestling fan for so long and then looking at a match where you're still completely fucking awed. Yeah. Like surprised. How, me and Shane had this and conversation recently of, we were talking about, actually, this was yesterday, we were talking about the Bucks uh, FTR acclaim match. We were like, I just feel like I've seen it all before. I'm kind of bored of it. But then that main event gets rid of all of that. Yeah, and I, I, I just think one of the things I really enjoyed about it as well was like, you know, I think WWE have done such a great job at long-term storytelling. Mm. But like, and, and they did an amazing job with the bloodline and how it segued into Cody. But they told us what they ended up. We knew yeah, what, yeah, that, that we was, knew what that the, was we knew what the Years in advance nearly. Yeah. yeah. Cody had laid out his objectives. We knew what the end of that story was going to be. Whereas with that one, like a lot of the story just became apparent yeah even during the ma- even more yeah. apparent during the match when you're just going oh my god like this is this is a family saga <laughs> like, yeah yeah this man this man is willing to fucking this man is willing to fucking die here and drink and this man is going to kill him in front of his family yeah and both of these and, men are willing to do that like and the importance of place on the AEW title and just yes. really leaning into like Danielson being a broken down veteran who maybe can't get it done yeah and what's the legacy now of Swerve's first run as AEW world champion it's one of the best reigns that they've had. I think it's yeah, really solid. I think it's top two or three anyway. And they just got to figure out a way in there just to keep him activated, keep him fresh, yeah. without necessarily always been in the world title scene. Yeah, unfortunately for unfortunately for Swerve, I don't think like his reign coincided with a, biz- a bit of a business downturn. I don't think it's no, no, with him. No, no, I think it's been the case since probably the middle of MJF's run, or since WWE got super hot. Since WWE got super hot, yeah. So. Uh, but there's not like any mad impetus. Like I, I think we're only going to start seeing a main, um, a, a permanent kind of main eventer for a while in AEW when somebody really takes off. Yeah, yeah. In a way uh, that so, really embeds business, and nobody's really done that yet. What I want to see now is I and I wonder, you know, business periods can generally tend to coincide with a hot baby face chasing the title. Yeah, you had Austin in the late nineties. You had Cody recently, and I wonder is the best thing for AEW to do now. What I kind of said earlier is have um, Hangman retires Danielson and Swerve goes on the chase. Yeah, I think Swerve can still possibly get there. Osprey could also possibly get True. there. True, yeah. Um, yeah. But it's just going to be about who's actually really... Like, I, I do feel like Kenny coming back for his face run has the potential to do that as well. Yeah, true. But Jesus, they're going to be humming at the top of that. <laughs> they will be. But I, it's just going to be a case of who's going to rebound them back to the business, at, at the very business they were at least for a while, you know. Where, yeah, yeah. You know, they're, they're getting a lot of like you know a million viewers on a, on a trot like yeah oh, now look I know by, by rates, something to by rates are still strong yeah. he said this is the second the, in the top two of uh, the last 12 months and the Sting one did a monster number 180,000 pay per view buys that's their second highest ever so if it's just below that it's a super success so do you think uh, do you think the feeling is coming back yeah 
Yeah, hard not to after that show. Yeah, but hard not to after that show. Yeah. It was that much of a fucking burn burner, exactly. wasn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Well, we've been the Wrestling Fan Wrestling Show. Uh, check us out on all our socials. Um, and, you know, like, comment, subscribe, all yeah. that stuff. I don't know uh, what tell, us, said. tell us if you want to see uh, Shane back, if you want to yeah. see Dunphy back. Or if you want to see just the two of us again. Maybe you don't. Maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe just happy with the two-man boots. Maybe this is the two-man boots. Maybe this was a total clusterfuck and nobody watched it and everybody hates it. <laughs> <That'll work>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we just have that MJF rain on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. We are. Uh, Please let this out. We're, 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 we're Adam new baby. Cole and the MJF, fuck's sake. Sorry, everyone.